Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa in the uh, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. We have a crisis today in the largest ecological system on Earth. The Great Barrier Reef of Australia is under extreme stress from very, very warm water, which has bleached uh, vast regions of the coral. First of all, uh, by a little way of background, the size in terms of area of the Great Barrier Reef of Australia is about that of the countries of, say, Germany or Japan or Italy. There's uh, over 3,000 reefs, 6,000 islands comprising the region, 1,625 types of fish, 133 types of sharks and rays, and 600 types of corals, soft corals, hard corals. Basically comprises the largest ecosystem on Earth. And since the turn, and since the turn of the century from about 1880 to present day, the sea surface temperature in the Coral Sea, which encompasses a lot of the Great Barrier Reef, is 1.2, 1.3 degrees Celsius, uh, warmer today than it was um, about 1880 or so. So this year, of course, we've had the very large El Nino event um, in the Pacific, which is which has um, been very, very powerful. In fact, one of the most powerful that we've ever seen. Um, it is even stronger than the 1997 to 98 one previous. This is not the first time that the barrier reef has undergone a lot of bleaching, but this is the, by far, this is the worst ever bleaching of the reef, which is ongoing um, as I speak in this video. So if the water temperature gets too warm or too cold, then it stresses the zoanthellae, which are the symbiotic algae that coexist with the coral polyps to make up the reef. So the zoanthellae provide food and uh, they give the color to the reefs, the vibrant colors that we see. So water temperature is too warm right now on mostly the northern part, the northeast part of the Great Barrier Reef. The zoanthellae get stressed out and they flee the coral, they leave the coral. This leaves the coral very vulnerable um, and it can cause death. Um, in fact, about 50% of the bleached areas in the Great Barrier Reef are expected to have complete mortality. So if the, you know, I'm talking about the region from Cairns all the way down the coast to roughly to, you know, the, around the Papau, uh, New Guinea um, region um, that's offshore. So an aerial survey was done um, this was triggered by the reports of very, very large bleaching. So using drone technology and uh, photography from, from planes, an aerial survey was done of 520 reefs, um, the north, mostly in the northernmost regions. Of those 520 reefs, only four of them were healthy. 516 of these reefs um, have been bleached, so the zoanthus the zoanthellae have left and the coral has turned white. And 50% of them will die. Which ones won't die? Well, the um, basically, the if the water temperature returns closer to normal and the zoanthellae return, then they, within about eight weeks of leaving, then the coral can recover. So right now we're on a death watch. Basically, the water is still warm. If the water cools down off in this region, then um, some of the reef will, will recover, but be severely weakened. So UNESCO is the United Nations 
educational, scientific, and cultural organization part of the UN. They're the people that declare sites to be World Heritage Sites and uh, determine if they're, they're in danger or not. So the Great Barrier Reef, of course, is one of the World Heritage Sites. It, it's important to our planet. You know, it's part of our ecosystem on our planet. It's a very large area. It's very important to the Australian economy. Um, it's a huge magnet for tourism in Australia. It's a huge um, ecosystem, a huge biodiversity hotspot, if you like. The biodiversity hotspots on land are things like the Amazon rainforest. It's definitely the marine biodiversity hotspot with all of the, you know, all of the fish that, that live on the reef. So getting back to the UNESCO, they, they've been lobbied hard by the Australian government in the last few years because they wanted to put the Great Barrier Reef on the danger list of World Heritage Sites. And they were convinced, oh, the health of the reef is fine. You know, the Australian government, which is basically in the pockets of mining corporations. In fact, they wanted to blow away parts of the reef to uh, build a coal term terminal to ship more coal off. I mean, talk about, you know, talk about ultimate irony. Um, so they, uh, the, the UNESCO was successfully lobbied by the Australians to not have the reef on the World Heritage uh, Danger List. And of course, UNESCO, you know, after this bleaching, I mean, what choice are they going to have? They must reconsider and add it to their their list. Of course, the water temperature this year is very, very high, both from the climate change, as I've said, the 1.2, 1 1.4 to 1.4 degrees temperature rise in the Coral Sea since the turn of the century, and also with the record El Nino that has been going on for most of, uh, you know, for lots of lots of 2015 and now well into 2016. It is weakening, but it still has a lot of kick left to it. Um, the Barrier Reef is, is 2,300 kilometers long. Um, it also protects the coast from storms, you know, apart from being a habitat for vast numbers of marine species. And it's a great tourist area, lots of scuba diving. You know, its loss would be its loss to planet Earth would be devastating, not not just to planet Earth. I mean, to Australia, it, it would it would do a big number on the Australian sort of you know the Australian identity, if you like, you know the the Australian sense of place, um, the 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 global sense of place when these restarts start to drop. Now, the group, the Great Barrier. Uh, reef Marine Park Authority um, has the entire reef on level three alert, which is their highest alert for bleaching. Um, and that setting that alert triggered the aerial survey by a Terry Hughes, um, who's a National Coral Bleaching Task Force leader. Um, and they surveyed 600 kilometers of the reef um, a while, you know, just a few weeks ago and found 60% bleached and the reports in the last week now have gone to say 95% of the reef is bleached with a 50% mortality rate expected. Um, so, so this is, um, you know, basically this, this is solid evidence that we, we've, we've pushed the ecosystem way too far. You know, we've stressed the ecosystem just in too many ways. Um, the ocean acidification does not help with the bleaching because corals are calcium based and, and with the acidification that dissolves the, uh, that can dissolve the corals. The change in sea level is also going to be a big factor in coral reefs worldwide. So if coral reefs withstand the extremely warm sea surface temperatures and if they withstand the ex additional extreme weather events and the higher waves 
and uh, large storm surges and things from typhoons and hurricanes, if they withstand that type of thing, then if we do get sea level rise of say seven meters by 2070, which I've been talking about, now this is an outlier, but the there's been a lot of noise in the media just in the last week or so about the rates being double what the mainstream science thought. So perhaps two meters by 2010 instead of one meter, you know, and I'm, so they're getting closer to, m to my number. You can just Google is seven meters by 2070 possible and look at that YouTube video. So when, if we have that type of sea level rise, then of course the coral are located at the depth they're at because there's sufficient light and sufficient nutrients um, for them to thrive, um, to, 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 to root and anchor onto the bottom and thrive. And if sea levels are suddenly, you know, in a very short period of time in terms of coral lifetimes, you know, seven meters high, then lots of the corals will just not get enough, will not get sufficient light and will, will have very high mortality. Um, and as long as the sea level is rapidly changing, you know, it's the coral doesn't really, you know, find an optimum water depth above it because the levels are always changing. So that will re reduce the, the reefs around the world. So this is just another, you know, incident. When people talk about sea level rise, it's always, you know, how does it affect humans? How does it affect our cities, migrations, etc. But it does also have an enormous impact on on the coral uh, in the ocean. So basically, you know, the earth is losing its ability to sustain life and the mortality, you know, very high mortality in the largest ecosystem on earth, namely the Great Barrier Reef off Australia um, is just another sort of, you know, it's another strong sign of evidence that we've basically put a wrench into the ecological systems on our planet. So I've been pushing, as you can see in other videos, that we need to um, apply the three-legged stool as soon as possible. We need to zero fossil fuel emissions. We need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere um, to lower the levels, to restore a stable climate and restore a stable chemistry in the oceans reduce, you know, get rid of ocean acidification. We need to cool the Arctic because the Arctic loss of sea ice and snow cover, which will occur completely in, in, you know, a summer in the very near future will greatly increase the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events, probably by, you know, a factor of an order of magnitude, 10, 20 times, maybe 50 times. I mean, the climate has changed, so the statistics of weather patterns around the globe are changing. So also, this links to this video, apart from, you could follow my YouTube channel, Paul Beckwith, you can, um, links to this, my videos and little blogs go on to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, there's a please donate button on the main taskbar on my website, and please consider uh, supporting my work for these videos and the research uh, going into, into how our Earth system is changing. Um, I'm not funded um, by the university uh, for any of this work. Um, I get funded for the odd course that I'm teaching at the moment, but there's no funding for this work. So thank you for your attention and uh, until next time, goodbye for now.